Are you looking to start using the tool Answer the Public in order to help you generate SEO keywords and content and topic ideas? Well, if that's the case, you have made it to the right video. That's exactly what we're diving into today. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, I'm Mariah from MariahMagazine.com. And on this channel, I help simplify things like SEO, websites, tech, and I dive into tools and recommendations to help you grow your online business in a way that works for you. So in today's video, I'm gonna walk through how to use Answer the Public. I'm gonna walk through the free version. To be honest, I don't even have a paid version of Answer the Public, but I'm just gonna dive into a screen share, show you around, and give some ideas and tips on how I would use it in order to generate ideas for, like I said in the intro, SEO keywords, content and topic ideas for your website or blog. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so in order to access Answer the Public, you can go to answerthepublic.com. I will leave the link to that also in the video description box below. Okay, so when you get here, you will notice that you can register for a free account and you can get three daily searches. Okay, so this might change by the time that you're watching this recording, but that's how it is right now. So without creating an account, I can get one search a day. Okay, so before we dive into just like what it's pulling, I wanted to go over kind of where it's getting its information from. So when you type in something and answer the public and it gives you all of this data, all of this topic, all of this information, it's pulling it from autocomplete data from Google and other search engines. Okay, so autocomplete data, what is that? That's basically like when you're going to Google and you're typing something in right here, so you can start typing things in, and this is autocomplete data. Okay, so basically answer the public is pulling in all of these like autocomplete suggestions that would take you a lot of time to go in and kind of pull if you were going to do this one by one. Okay, so that's why Answer the Public is such a powerhouse of a tool because it kind of pulls all of this information for you. So let's head back here. And basically what you want to do is you want to enter a seed keyword enter a topic okay so enter it says right here one or two one to two words for best results so just like i did on google i typed in web designer or if you sell greeting cards like one of my clients maybe we start with greeting cards okay so you want to start and it's it's gonna feel a little vague i know but like that's the whole point because we want to see like a massive amount of ideas for seo keywords for for different topics for different pieces of content if you go in here and you type in like a long tail keyword or a key phrase and it's something like how much do website designers get paid well you're not leaving very much left for answer the public to auto suggest there. It's just going to be like, how much do website website designers get paid in the US? How much do website designers get paid in Virginia? Like all of that. So in order to get the most bang for your buck here, definitely start with like a more vague topic idea. And then once you figure out your topic, you can go ahead and put it in this box here and then choose basically right here is like the database that you want answer the public to pull data from. So every country listed on here has different search data. So that's why you have to choose a country to kind of pull that data from. OK, and then you can choose your language and then just hit search. So for this example, I just typed in the keyword or the seed keyword web designer. OK, so then I got hit with a page that looks like this. Yours might look a little bit different, especially if you're watching this like a couple months later, a year later, two years later. Y'all know how technology is. They like to change stuff all of the time. So bear with me if your screen does not look exactly like this. But basically, we have a lot of things to look at here. OK, so the first thing is the search volume. So this is like 
like how many searches for this specific keyword is happening per month. And you can always hover over these question marks to be able to understand like what these mean. And then it breaks down just like the color code that it uses when we're looking at other stuff. Okay, so then we also have cost per click data. That is for Google Ads, Google AdWords, that's not for SEO, okay? So there is Google Ad and Google AdWords data mixed in here. So just be aware of that when you are looking for it. If you're not running ads, you can literally ignore this stuff right here. Once you start to scroll down here, now we're gonna get to the fun stuff, okay? So I know at first glance, this looks extremely overwhelming. They did do an update recently and it's just like, well, man, this looks like a lot. But the cool thing is that they kind of organize it based on this seed keyword. They organize it with keywords that have R, can, how, what, when, where, which, who, why, will. So it kind of like pulls in all of these different kinds of questions that are related to your seed keyword. And you can see me just doing the free version. I can see the search volume data for specific ones. I'm not sure like how or why it determines which ones I get access to for free and which ones I don't get data access to for free, but you can see some data showing up here. I don't typically usually look at that, but what is really helpful is these color coded circles right here. Okay, so the darker it is, the more popular that specific keyword is. And the lighter it is, the less popular it is. So if you forget about that, they do have the indicators right here. Okay, so all of that is really good to know. I will say the thing about this that makes it really overwhelming is like you literally have to turn your head in order to like read some of these and it can kind of like mess with your brain. So what you can do and what I prefer to do is just view the data straight up, y'all. Like just give me the data straight up. The thing is, is that when you do it this way, you lose this indicator of like popularity. Okay, so just keep that in mind, but it's way easier to look at the data this way. And so they organize it here and you can see in the free version like i said we do get access to some data if you didn't think that one of these were helpful you can go and hide it you can also click image and it will allow you to get this image so you can screenshot it on your computer you can save it for a presentation you can put it into like a topic or content research folder or whatever you'd like so when you do it this way and you hit the image now you can see the indicator of how popular these keywords are so this is really really helpful I'm interrupting this video really quick because I created something super awesome and I want to share it with you. So if you need help planning out your SEO keywords for your blog posts, for your product pages, for your homepage, for any page on your website, then definitely check out my SEO keyword planner. It's a five page editable workbook created in Google Sheets that will help you brainstorm, organize data, and strategize your keywords accordingly. I include tips, best practices, and examples to help you get started. Click the link in the video description below to check it out. So let me close out of here. And if you thought that 114 questions wasn't enough for, for topic and like uh, content ideas, well, we can keep scrolling because we are not done yet. So keep scrolling and you'll see prepositions here. So similar data there's obviously less keywords in this one which makes it a little bit easier to look at but you can see like we have keywords related to for is near to with so like web design with wordpress uh, web designer without a degree. So same thing, same type of data that we can see here. Okay, so what is also very helpful is if you're like web designer for therapists, okay, like what are people trying to find from Google when like they're searching for that? Because sometimes how we see a keyword isn't how Google sees the keyword. So we do always want to do a little bit of research on Google before we go ahead and we target a keyword or we decide to like plan content around it. So Answer the Public makes this easy. You can go ahead and click on any of these and it's gonna open up a new tab and it allows you to search Google for the keyword so that you can see, okay, like, the way that I'm viewing the keyword, is it the way that Google sees the keyword, okay? so. 
Always do a Google search for a keyword before you target it, before you create content about it or around it. So we're gonna close out of that. But yeah, you can do that for literally all of them if you just want a better idea of like, what does this keyword even mean? So like web design without images, not even sure what's going to show up for this. Okay, so apparently it's minimalist website design. It looks like it's a Reddit. It looks like it's a some list posts here. So it's just good practice, like I said, to Google search these things. And then same thing for this one. If you don't, if you don't want to break your neck while you're looking at these, just click data and then you'll be able to get the same thing here. If all of this was still a little overwhelming because like, this is a lot. You can click the view all and you can choose the different modifiers, like which ones you want to see, which ones you're just like, nah, that ain't, that ain't matching with it. Okay, so you can do that. So extremely helpful. So then when we keep scrolling, we literally have so many other options. Okay, so there's also comparison keywords. So if you wanted to compare, I don't know, like web designer versus UX designer, if you wanted to create a blog post about that or you wanna check to see like what's showing up on Google for that, that's really helpful. So it's like comparison ones. I would say like, especially if you're, if you have software or you're creating content around like software reviews or like product reviews, doing the comparison comparison one is extremely helpful because you can compare like different alternatives which can help the user make a buying decision and so you know that they're kind of further along in the buyer's journey okay so keep that stuff in mind when you're looking at this stuff so same thing you can always change how you're viewing the data and then keep scrolling and then we have basically a bunch of them kind of listed by alphabeticals. So we're starting with website designer and then it's like words that come when you put an A in Google and like what are the auto suggest ones that populate there. Okay, so you can get in so many rabbit holes here, but I think there's one more. Yeah, there's one more here. So there's also related. So like what keywords are related to web designer according to search engines auto suggest. So you can take a look at these, you can click on them, close them, and then take a look at the data in a different way like I said numerous times, if that's just easier for you. So the other thing that I wanted to mention is that you can save this information. Okay, so you can click save image or you can, when you start scrolling up, you'll be able to see like the actual export button, but you have to register for a free account in order to export this data. And typically it will it will allow you to export it as a CSV file. So if you wanted to put it into spreadsheets or whatever, or if you wanted to save the images, then you can go ahead and register for a totally free account to be able to export all of this. And then when you have a free account, you can unlock the three searches per day. So if you wanted to come back in here and you wanted to type in, I don't know, like website design, which is a little bit different than web designer, you're going to get different auto suggest options. So if you wanted to go down into a rabbit hole and unlock the three free searches a day, then you can just sign up for the free account. If you wanted to get more than that in terms of searches, Answer the Public's pricing honestly isn't too bad in terms of like topic and content and research and with the way that it pulls all of this information together, like this is so massive. This could keep a website or a blog busy for like two years. But if you wanted to get access to more searches, they do have monthly plans. And what I like about this is they actually have a $99 lifetime plan. That's pretty solid. A lot of software options don't offer that, don't offer a lifetime plan because they want to get people on subscriptions. But I think that that's super cool. Personally, I don't have an extended plan. I only use about one to three searches per day anyways. But if you are really going to dive into this tool, I think that it's it's definitely worth exploring because like I said, like this information can be super helpful. And then you could always pair this with like another paid SEO tool like SEMrush. And you can go ahead and copy these keywords into SEMrush and you can see the monthly search volume, the competition for SEO keywords versus CPC. So CPC is for Google AdWords only, it's not for SEO. So you can kind of pair this tool with other paid tools and you can 
get basically like all of your SEO keyword research done and have a ton of options. So that's it for today's tutorial. If you guys found this video helpful, give me a really quick thumbs up. Truly just that simple thumbs up goes a long way in helping my channel get pushed out to new people. So I really do appreciate it. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and I will see you in the next video.